Hey, welcome back to the worm. Man, it's nice out here right now. I'm, I'm not crying. Those are, those are just eye drops. Just put them in. Although, I probably should be weeping with joy right now. It's finally time to see the new tool. Unfortunately, I'm getting really old. And uh, a few weeks ago, I just fell down and broke bones. So I was carrying uh, water buckets for the shower down the cabin steps. Feet disappeared out from underneath me. Broke at least one rib, so I've been laid up for a while. Uh, Tito came out and carried all my propane tanks around and water jugs and stuff. And then Sarah took good care of me for a couple weeks, but can't sit around anymore. It doesn't hurt so much, but I can feel the rib like trying to come, not trying to come out of the skin, but it's definitely like an end sticking out my back. Anyway, whatever. It's not really that big a deal anymore. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Tito's out here, came out uh, last night, did the same thing, uh, squared away my propane tanks and stuff, and it's a perfect day today. We got to get this new tool out. I got to show you. I got to see how it works. He's got to take off in a few hours, so we're going to get it out, put it all together, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to let him run it because I can't really pick anything up right now. So uh, let me just show you what I got here. So this is the little saw uh, you guys have seen in the last few years. That's the one I use for limbing and bucking and whatnot. That's uh, I think about two and a half horsepower. That's a uh, MS250. And this is the one I've been using for milling. Everything I've built out here is made from lumber from all these trees that I made with this saw. I'm, this is what I mill with. That's only a 50cc saw and it's about four horsepower. It's a lot of horsepower for the size of the saw. But I don't think many people would build as much crap as I do with that with a saw that size. It works out fine because I'm just mostly milling cedar, a little bit of pine, a couple other things. It's really a pain in the butt to try to mill these big aspen trees with that saw. I mean, it's a nightmare. I've done a lot of flooring out here uh, in the man cave, in the cabin, probably somewhere else that I can't think of. Uh, with aspen and then also I like to do uh, ceilings roofs with uh, aspen because they're nice big fat boards and you know you guys know all these aspen trees out here are way past their prime they're not doing very well so they fall over I mill them up this saw is fantastic I can't believe how many hours I have on this saw full throttle milling like hundreds hundreds thousands I don't know and I've never had any problem with it but we got an upgrade this is a 661 that is a 36 inch bar this is a 20 inch bar that's an 18 inch bar and this is a real milling saw this is so four horsepower 7.2 i believe it is a freaking monster i thought for all the time i've been out here i've thought about getting a bandsaw mill i mean i've kind of gone back and forth i thought it'd be fun to get one just for something different Although I really love chainsaw milling and, you know, I don't have any roads out here. I barely have trails like they're four wheeler trails. It's not the kind of surfaces that I can easily, you know, drag giant logs around. My four wheeler won't pull giant logs. So basically the biggest trees I cut down and I have to mill them right in place. So a bandsaw mill is not going to help with that. You got to be able to take the mill out to the tree and do it. So I'm sticking with chainsaw milling and it's time we got, uh, we stepped it up a little bit. Switch out to my dirty clothes and then uh, go open up the box of goodies I got in the cabin. Tito and I, uh, when we got this chainsaw, got it about a month ago and it sat for a little while and we just had to go try it out. So we made up stuff to cut with it. We uh, chopped up some logs of a big aspen tree and set them out so that uh, he could mill them up for his cabin. We just really had to have a chance to play with that saw and see what it could do. So why don't you watch that while I uh, finish getting ready? Okay. Test number one, never started before. Wow, that almost cut my jacket in half. I'm not used to a saw that big. See, I started in it, just yeah, me right into the log. Holy crappers! That's sweet. Here you go. Give it a try. That I mean, does it. There's like one too much inches <clears throat> on here. 
Looking through this viewfinder doesn't give a good size of what what you're working with there. Well, you could get a lot closer. Oh. I'll do it. You do this. All right. That's no 261. That's no slouch. Hey, look at these. Holy crap, I thought that was snow under there. Yeah. Sheesh. Oh, I can't all wait the, to mill with it. All the hamsters out there that are watching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we uh, needed an excuse to try out the big saw before we put it in the mill for the rest of its life. We're talking about it and I don't think I don't think I really have a use for it that's not milling. So we walked all over the place and looked for the biggest trees we could find that we have a use for. So we got this, we're probably only gonna get this one cut up before it gets dark, but T's gonna use Aspen for the floor framing and the floor boards of his cabin. So we're gonna get this chopped up right now. Still could cut it pretty easily with the 261. We're going to use the 661. It's uh, quite a big jump there. <laughs> you know what the biggest difference is? Oh. How you can tell? This what? says Magnum on it. Oh. And the others aren't Magnum. Even when you think these Aspens are going to be good, they're usually not. If it is good, we we'll try to get, I think, 10 foot, a little over 10 foot logs out of it. Ideally, we'd probably get three. It's really heavy and we can't get the four-wheeler back here to move the log around, so he's basically going to have to mill them where they fall. So we brought my little uh, spindles that I've carved up at different points just to support the log. So we're going to try cutting this guy off. There, We'll cut it there. If the wood's good inside, we'll measure up 10 feet and a couple inches, cut it, and try to get it to fall onto these. If it doesn't go directly onto those, where's the... I brought the log lifter over here too. Go for the metal. You just stuff one of these under there. Yeah. You see what happens? If nothing else, it might support a little bit of the weight and not. And see what happens. Was the preclusion to a lot of the best. And the worst thing the best and that was all the best <laughs> that's ever happened hand me a giant <laughs> chainsaw and let's see what yeah. happens hold my beer and watch this <laughs> i've used a saw this big a few times many years ago but after years Three years now of non-stop using those other two. This seems unreasonably big. I know there are guys that use way bigger than this all day long, but I am not used to, to it. Pretty froze. Yeah, it is. There you go. Nice. Is it any good? It is. It's freaking Perfect. We got lucky. Not a single bad spot in it. Just you hear that it. tree? You're gonna be my floor. Dude, that never happens with these trees. Gosh, that's heavy. <laughs> Let's see the back. Wow. In three years, that's maybe the third or fourth or fifth that I've ever gotten that are perfect that far down. Dude, you're gonna be able to do your entire floor framing and flooring out of this. So this is what was so frustrating with the smaller saw, is milling it through, how how much do you think that weighs? It's That's pretty, probably a it's pretty dense. 20 pound. Yeah, it's 20 pounds and it's what, an inch and a half thick. Yeah. So milling that with a four horsepower saw, a 50cc saw is just kind of ridiculous. So this is gonna be really fun. Yeah. Let's go right there, that's 10.6. <laughs> Nice. 
nice work. <laughs> Dude, that could not have gone any better. I thought that was uh, coming down out of the trees there. It didn't. <laughs> it, it didn't budge. It just went. Funk. <laughs> I think we could get it to fall right on these again. If we get two in a row, I think we deserve a reward. I'm thinking it's gonna go right about there. All right, this is ten. So this is like ten five on that side. We missed it by six inches. I shouldn't have moved it. You shouldn't have, and you were right. Should have kicked that right up to the tree. We're a bunch of slobs. Missed that by almost a foot. Oh, it was so close. You're waiting for that bolt to ping off of there. <laughs> that made me sweat. <laughs> it's hard to say. That might be soft there, but by the time you get up there, it's definitely going to be pretty soft. It's not too bad. I mean, all the rest of this is good wood, so yeah. You know, you might get two slabs in the metal that aren't good, but you get a lot of good stuff. Oh, yeah, Plus, you can get a two by four use. out of there. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's almost comically. Yeah, it is. I mean, a real man would probably think it was straight forward, but yeah, look how much bar that is compared to the log. And that's like a 14 inch log. Got that one cut out and no bueno. Total garbage. This is longer than you need by a bit, so I'm gonna do a, a cookie and then a cookie. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try with the the old milling saw and the new milling saw and mm -hmm. see the difference. Cookie. Cookie, that's all he hears. Cookies and cheese. I can't wait to mill with this thing. Wow. Holy cow. Is that a milling chain? No, that's a fresh full chisel chain. And so is this. Uh-oh. It's fair, like head to head, fair, fair comparison. Wow, that there. was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> that's gonna mill <clears throat> through this like that does through cedar. Yeah, like an eight inch cedar. I mean, that's why people don't mill Unless you're doing a little bit of light milling, some pine or something, you might use that. I mean, the upside of that is if you were really like hiking out into the woods like we did when we first got here, you don't have to freaking carry this thing around. Right. In a massive mill that's light and it'll still, you know, we've milled up to 15 inches, 16 inches with that mill or with that saw. The other bonus of this is when you're using a, that tiny mill, you only clamp it on here. There's no clamp here, so you can go from where the mill is here right to the very top. Yeah. This one, I mean, if we're really not going to use this anymore for cutting anything, I'll take these take dogs those, yeah. all the way off. 
Let me get a better pool stance. Oh, I don't even think you were in the film there. You want some chest jerky? <laughs> <laughs> the best kind. We're trying to mill, but we keep getting sidetracked. First Tito had to see if these logs would burn. And they do. And then uh, Glarby came down from the tree, our pet porcupine. I decided to go for the uh, big chainsaw, got in touch with Granberg, and they're really nice folks. They uh, sent me out a new mill and some toys to go with it. So this is the 36 inch mill, just like the one I've been using for a few years, except mine was the small log mill. And they sent out the winch system, so I'm not using my uh, trailer winch like I have been. Got a couple ripping chains and the quick release clamps, which I have not used or seen. I'm assuming that they go here and here so that you don't have to use a scrunch to raise and lower the whole thing, but let's bust into it and see what we got. Oh, he broke oh. it already. Oh, staples. Those are the best for your finger pads. We're also giving the first try to the nice desk here. Figured it probably should get scratched up a little bit. Uh, reach and pull or tip? Let's do a, a hybrid. Okay. Oh geez, don't don't dent up the desk. Whatever you do, Whoa. all that time making this desk pretty. Look at that! It even comes with a, a painted scrunch. I like that. We did it. We got it put together. It only took two of us. What was that? Seven hours, and uh, we only had this many leftover parts. So we're pretty sure it's going to work fine. He's putting together the winch. Uh. It's not going well, I can tell, just by the way he's swearing and breathing heavy. <laughs> so I decided to get a new saw. I started looking at how much it was going to cost to not just do a slight incremental increase in power. You know, you could pay, I don't know, a few hundred bucks and get 20% more power, which just didn't seem worth it. And then you get up to a fair jump in power is... You know a lot of money and to jump another 25 percent from that is only another hundred bucks and another 25 percent is only another hundred bucks or something like that so ended up going you know just easing up there in price and then if you're going to spend that much you might as well pay for the full wrap handle and if you're going to spend that much you might as well pay for the uh the carburetor that you don't adjust because that's what i got on the other milling saw and i really like never had to mess with it and it got uh i gotta admit this saw got a little, a little spendy. Cost more than probably half the cars I've owned. Here's by comparison. Here's the milling chain from the old saw, and here's the new saw. <laughs> you gotta go back quite a ways. That is a huge freaking difference. Look at the old mill versus the new mill too. Pretty big difference. We're getting the new winch put together. This is the old boat winch that I've been using forever. And I do notice, I kind of forgot about this, but I put this handle on backwards on purpose when we got this mill. I don't remember why, I just liked it. Oh, actually it was because this ran into it. But now with the real winch on here, you can have the handle the right way. I don't know if it's going to screw with my head. I think it probably is. It's kind of crazy how much crap we've built with just this thing. Yeah. And a little relatively, like the smallest milling saw anybody would use. Oh man, all new, it just feels so different. It's definitely a more elegant setup than the, the uh, $18 Walmart boat winch. When I think chainsaw mill, I do think elegance. To the oh other side. man, look at the bearings in that thing. I don't think there's bearings. Well, it must be nicely greased. It's just a bushing, not even a bushing, it just fits. Yeah, this is all uh, machined out of a billet. Matching. That piece, all these are machined. You can see the tool marks. That's nice. They make good stuff. We're not really trying to accomplish anything today, but just uh, try the mill out. 
However, if we do have time to mill a whole log, I'll use all that to make my bed in there, which I probably could do in the next week with a bad rib. Maybe, I just can't do any of this, so. Make me some lumber. Probably make a bed out of that one, don't you think? Just carve it out like a canoe and. Oh yeah, <laughs> like a coffin. Yeah. <laughs> and then all these can make uh, the ceiling in there. I'm guessing this is gonna be a nightmare to peel. I could feel the ground moving when you do that. Yep, I need the pry bar. I'll get it. <laughs> Was that an inch and a half of steel? <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's pretty flimsy. <laughs> I've never, ever, uh, not only have I never met anybody, but I've never even imagined a human that can break as much stuff as you can. He uses up brand new tools in a day. Like, yeah, this is just used up, this hammer. <laughs> yeah, right. It broke itself. Yep. If I can get under there, I can bend this. <laughs> my goal, I'm really hoping this is super frozen to the ground so I can try to bend it. Oh my God, you did bend it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> just well, like that. The, that's the weakest point. Well, we can just cut it off and sharpen it right there. It'd still be pretty good. I don't really have anything stronger to to let's pry see. that with well this might work gooder because it's <laughs> biting into the ground i just handed him this 40 pound piece of prying steel and i said i bet you can bend this go, oh yeah i could bend that <laughs> i like this uh point and click milling <laughs> stand back with the camera and watch somebody else do all this whoa look at the ice on there that is not going to be fun to peel. Where am I going? Yeah, keep going. I want to start this for you. and You don't want to see my rib come out of my back through my jacket? Right, but uh, you'll have a com like a really direct comparison on how... Yeah, that's true. Maybe I'll mill the first it. half of the log and you mill the second half or something. Yeah. I'm but... super freaking curious. We were just talking about... I'm guessing that this saw is so powerful compared to the one we've been using that like the other saw depending on the log sometimes you get through one board or two boards and have to switch switch out the chains and if you feel them or look at them they still feel really sharp but the saw i think just doesn't have enough power especially on a big log like this it doesn't have enough power when you've got like a full bar stuck through the log to use anything but a super ch sharp chain so i'm guessing that we're gonna get through a lot of slabs with one chain on here. We'll see what happens. It's now like a week later because <laughs> these logs were so frozen, had so much ice on them. We had to use the blow, the uh, driveway blowtorch. I thought about that. We should have videoed it some of that. Well, we got more logs. We're gonna to have to blowtorch those. Right. Yeah, it took what an between an hour and two hours just yeah. to get the bark off. We blowtorched it and peeled it at the same time. So uh, yeah, I think we're good to go. We also. I don't know whose fault it was, but it was probably mine. I put one of the parts on wrong, so we got it all together. Let's yeah. do this. Let's give it a go. See what happens.
One thing that's different about this from the other one is you can't pull it out sideways now. Which is, when you're doing this, I guess it doesn't really matter, but if you were halfway through and you wanted to pull the saw out, you can't do it. You'd have to back it all the way out of the cut, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I can't pick it up, so. Yep. <laughs> That is crazy. Yeah? I mean, it's just spraying chips everywhere. Yeah, I turned the camera back on me. I don't know if the audience can see how heavy it is because, like, I'm super strong in well, holding we, it up. We do see you shaking. Is that what you... That's, but you kind of always shake. <laughs> that's nervous. Nervous <laughs> tension. Yeah, that was, uh, that was like running through there. However, that was a pretty narrow cut. I mean, it started out maybe 12 inches, and then here in the middle, you're only cutting through 6 inches, so that doesn't tell you anything. All right, let's do another. We're just about to start the next cut, and I don't really have any of this set up right, but I realize this handle needs to slide over a bit. I think, I don't know why I think this, I might have dreamt it. I think this might be called the on-off bar, which sort of makes sense. It's like to get you on the log and then off the other side. But if you're not hitting it on the log here, like that, you can figure out what level is. Start like this, you have no idea. So we're going to have to slide this over, and then I don't know where we want the winch. I guess we just keep jamming it in there. And I apparently can lift the chainsaw without my rib coming out. I think it's okay. This is pretty sweet. If you don't have one of these, you just have two of these guys. Then you have to use the uh, scrunch, which is, of course, this fits everything on the mill, which is fantastic. Uh, drop it down, but with one quick release on both ends, you don't even need a tool, in theory. Oh, I got my, uh, that's why you don't tie the winch on like that. <laughs> it's a lot of learning to do. Kind of forgot what we're making boards for here. Need boards for the ceiling, boards for some shelves. So the ceiling would be three quarters, the shelves would be, I want fat ones, like two inches. What was the other thing I was making boards for? The shelves. Oh, my bed. Let's do one inch for my bed. Ah. ah. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks for your input. Can you start it? I feel like I might be able to start it with my left hand without breaking it. Well, if you're here, you can start it. The uh, on up bar is still too far over. See how it fell off there? Yeah. Like this. So this has to be. You really can't use this on anything but a monster log. You almost need like two of these on here. Yeah. Man, it's it's so consistent. You can in the sapwood you can see the chain, but here it's just like I don't know. You don't see any any dips or anything, but that's where that's where I fell off the end. So let's just clean that off. Now it's a bit excessively narrow. I do feel like we could stick another one in there, but. When you get down, this cut will be fine. This bar will be sitting here. But if we were two cuts up, it would still almost be hanging off the edge of the edge of the log. So I don't know. Maybe this is probably the smallest log you'd want to do with this mill. Enough rambling. Enough rambling.
Much better. That's much better. All right, for the record, this is perfectly milled, like a real professional, except for a little bit here, but I planed that down. We'll check it out after you're done with your first board. Yeah, I'm gonna, it's gonna look like a stair stringer. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, did you use an ice pick on this? <laughs> That is so sweet. It's fun just to watch. Yeah. What were you saying about how we used to do it? Oh, uh, yeah, the milling a log half this size would have taken three times as long. Three times, yeah. If, well, remember the first milling uh, saw we had was that Craftsman. Yeah. Remember every single day something fell off of it? Yep. I was constantly looking for parts in the ground and everything. It might be, it's more than three times as fast. It, I mean, it's it's like, it's three times as fast as you would mill in the summertime with the other ones. Right. I mean, this still has frozen edges on it. I think the speed that the bar is actually going through this, this saw versus the 261 in this wood, I think is about three or four times the speed. So freaking cool. Dude, you did a great job. You did even better at the end than I did. I mean that's you can I mean you could see something. No, there, no, it's, you it's no, I mean if you feel it, it's it's like marble. Well, that was insanely fun. So much fun. I'm still really glad that I started with a smaller saw and did that for <laughs> three years straight. We'll have to do a video in a month or something just on this mill and setup and comparisons and all that stuff. It would be fun is to take a mill on each side. Oh, and like race to the middle? Yeah. Put a cookie in the middle and whoever gets there first. Yep. And you have to, you could handicap it a little bit. Yeah. 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 Handicapped by horsepower. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's. We should definitely. I think that's do a that. horrible idea, and we should definitely yep. do it. <laughs> I feel like the small saw, for the kind of lumber we have out here, is probably way more versatile. It's easier to lug around. You could use the saw for more than just milling. And I got this 36-inch mill. Uh, that's 36-inch bar, and I have a couple logs out here that are 20. 4, 25, so it'll take up most of the area, but if you're not doing that, if you're only using half this bar, then you might as well use the other saw. We did uh, screw up a couple boards. So these are three quarter. I'll use those on the ceiling in the cabin. I guess there's three three quarters. And then you can see this side is a lot wider than this because one of the uh, quick release clamps came loose. I think that was my error and not the clamps but they do have to be really tightened down there a lot or they can come flopping one of them at the end of the bar unhooked itself and was dangling kind of getting in the chain almost so this is the one where it came loose see it's like that's supposed to be one inch and it's like one and three quarters and inch and a quarter there anyway doesn't matter we're gonna call it quits in a minute but we'll see if we can get one more log up here and get it set up for a milling tomorrow Maybe do a little blow torching real quick. Dude, just stick your hands straight in there. <laughs> Dummy.
gonna throw a new chain on and go over and uh, try milling those aspens that we chopped down with this thing. That's gonna be the the best test we got here for a new chainsaw mill comparison because that other saw was it just would not go through these big aspen logs, especially especially frozen and they're so frozen we're not gonna peel them. So let's see what happens. I think. I don't know. You think it's going to cruise through there? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I give you a hand, but I'm holding the camera. There it is. That's not very easily backpackable, is it? Yeah, need a mule team. We've got quite a crew here. We got, uh, one guy with a broken rib and a bad back, and the other one with a knee that doesn't bend. So, uh, I mean, I like milling back in the woods like this, except that actually the first couple slabs you take off are nice because you can kneel down and the mill's like right at a reasonable height. And as you get down further, you're like all hunched over trying to push it. And that's why I usually drive the four wheeler back in here and park it in front of the log, and then you can use the winch. You don't have to do a lot of pushing on the mill. I mean, this has got a lot more horsepower, so might, might not have to do that. Why do we have to cut the trees down to is, mill them? Can't it, we start up on top? Not without a small helicopter. Do you have a small helicopter? At home. Yeah, see, if you didn't bring it, then don't even bring yep. that crap up. It's not going to be helpful right now. Pretty meaty. Pretty beast, beastly. I mean, I guess it does what I thought it would. It cruises through that and like doesn't doesn't slow down. That was. Let's see. We got like 27 Seven. inches that are usable. Yeah. 27. And what's the end of this thing? 20. It's about 20 one or two because we got another fatter slice to go so yeah there's only five inches left over yeah that's surprising it just cruises through and that is a fresh chain on there and we started so that's the fourth or fifth cut but still don't slow down none that is a super solid log for that species all right we can only put four slabs on the four-wheeler trailer so uh run it down and find a place to drop all this mil milling building materials so these are going to be the floor frame for his cabin so yeah start a pile down there somewhere that is awesome if only it dried without cracking that would be a sweet table yeah you can already see where it's going to though yep yeah I don't know, that's just like years of getting some water in there or something. It's oh, so yeah. cool, that S though. Yeah, it stands for hope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a deer trap. He totally stiff legged it in there. That's the uh, footing that we didn't get around to pouring yet. Oh, there. Yeah. There's one. There's one. Oh, you can see them all. That's cool. Man, this feels so light. I know. I know. It's so wimpy. It's nice. Yeah. You'd think it would feel like insufficient or something but i like it yeah. i like a real small saw like that oh nice
Whew. Well, we finished milling that uh, Aspen log as it got dark last night. Got all the boards out to his building site. That was a crazy fun uh, day or two. I can totally see why this is considered a milling saw and this is not. However, I mean, I still was able to build all this stuff out here with this little tiny saw. So don't think you got to spend like a couple thousand dollars on a milling setup if you're just trying to make building materials. Of course, I think of most people milling for like tabletops and stuff like that, like really big hardwoods. Of course, you'd have to have a big saw for it, not this. But yeah, if you're just making two by fours and cedar siding or something, you could do this at a setup for 700 bucks. And I'm, I'm assuming, I've never done any research on any of this, but I'm assuming an Alaskan mill is called an Alaskan mill because this is something you could take apart, put in your back, backpack, haul out to the middle of the bush, put back together and, you know, build yourself a cabin or something. You wouldn't want to have to carry this thing around. I'll have to do uh, another video in a little while, uh, more of a, like a better review on this. I don't really like to review products, you know, especially if I haven't used, I'm not going to review a chainsaw if I haven't used 20 different chainsaws so I can actually compare them. But, you know, this, this Grandberg, this little Grandberg sawmill, I can't remember how exactly I chose that brand, but I've never had a single issue with it. It's super well made. So when I was thinking about getting a bigger mill and a big, bigger saw, there's no reason to change brands. And this thing is equally well made. Like this is not something that you're gonna have for a year and have to replace. We of course didn't even get a chance to use uh, the winch on here, which I'm really, really interested to do. <laughs> you know, this, this winch is on here because this saw is pretty underpowered and it takes a long time relatively to cut through a board. And if your chain's sharp enough, you're not really supposed to be pushing on the mill but even just that little pressure you do that for five days straight and it can really wreak havoc on your body so that that winch on there is really nice this saw is just so powerful that you know we didn't even have to use the winch but there's going to be a lot more milling of these big dead aspens around here now that we have this saw so the winch will definitely get get tried out the other part of the winch that we didn't get to try out here is this bar i obviously run my winch right down to this strap on the tree, which I can move up and down. This screws to the end of the log, something like yat. And then there's your attachment point. I think if I continue to mill here, I'm still gonna use that just cause it's four less screws you gotta use. But this thing is gonna be sweet for uh, milling back in the woods. Be especially nice cause I don't have to cram the four wheeler back there. You guys have seen in a whole bunch of uh, milling videos where I, <laughs> I have to cut a path to drive my four-wheeler back, park it right in front of the log, and use the front of the four-wheeler as a tie-off point for the winch, so no more. We'll try that soon. Also, uh, Granberg sent me their Easy Rail system, which is, uh, will replace those big two-inch square tubular rails and those steel plates that I made that screw on the end of the log. I don't know exactly how their rail system works, but I'm really fascinated to uh, try it out. The one advantage that I see uh, I've got the boxes here is the box is only five feet long and it's got 10 feet of rail in it and you can lift it with one hand so that in itself makes it nothing like my big fat rail system. I mean I like the rail system that I've been using because it's four pieces all of them are solid steel and there's kind of nothing to go wrong you're not going to bend anything break any screws off anything like that. But even for that aspen log we were just milling up somebody has to carry those I don't know how much those uh 13 yeah 13 foot rails way but they're long enough you can't put them on the four-wheeler trailer very easily and drive out somewhere so hopefully the new rail system would be something i can just you know maybe take apart in five foot sections throw on the back of the trailer and drive out to wherever we got a mill i think tito's going to do a lot more of his cabin with aspen now that we have this so there won't be as much of uh dragging logs to you know to the uh saw horses here it's going to be they're so heavy you're just going to have to mill it in place yeah so maybe that rail system is going to work out great Oh yeah, one more positive and negative I, I've noticed with this setup here. A huge positive is the bar's a lot longer, so you have more cutting teeth, which means for the same amount of board feet you cut through, the chain doesn't dull as fast, if that makes any sense. You've got more teeth, so they dull slower. Also, with this much horsepower, you can run your chain significantly duller and still just fly through the log. And that I like very much because some of those aspen logs i've like that log that we milled just now was that could have taken five or six chains <laughs> for the uh 261. 
just because if it's not an absolute razor it wouldn't go through it with that that horsepower the downside of this big saw and mill is it really won't work for small logs actually i shouldn't say that because i haven't really tried it but you can see we slid this bar in from halfway to a third or so just to be able to get on and off the first and last cuts of the log and if you look at this one this thing's only six inches in so you can do little tiny logs with that i suppose you could slide that bar in even further but you know we're talking about milling logs that are only this wide like eight or ten inches wide and you've got all this hanging off the end so i think you're going to get a lot it'd be a lot harder to keep it flat i don't know. don't listen to me don't take advice from anybody that's only used a a product like that for a couple days maybe don't listen to me at all but i will uh i'll make another video down the road and let you know how that's worked out just like with learning to chainsaw mill with the first mill there's a, a quite a big learning curve to use this thing too maybe in a month or two if my rib gets any better i'll have uh something more interesting to say about that uh, mill setup so all right well i'm off to find something to do another uh low-key project I think I got one or two more things I can do in the cabin here. I think I'm gonna make a, some kind of drying rack shelves or something for when I move in there, hopefully in a week or two. Gotta be able to take the uh, liners out of my boots, my gloves, all that stuff and dry them out over that heater. And then I just have to build a bed. And now that we've milled up those couple cedar logs, I've got all the lumber I need, so come back next week if you feel like it. Thanks for watching.